What's up, readers and console cowboys? Nick back to talk a little more sprawl. At the tail ends of Sprawl September here, I wasn't sure if I was going to do a review for Count Zero and Mona Lisa Overdrive, books two and three in the Sprawl trilogy. I was thinking of just doing a Why You Should Read when I was done, but I figure I'll talk a little Count Zero today. I finished this up last week. Uh, this is book two in the Sprawl trilogy. Got my review up for Neuromancer. If you want to check that out, I will link it above. I'll get into this a little bit about what it's about, but not really because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody that has not read uh, the trilogy yet. Pretty much this book takes place seven years after the events of Neuromancer, and we follow three new characters, three pretty much main characters. I wouldn't say any one character here really is the main character. If so, I'd have to say it's Bobby. So the characters we follow are Turner, Bobby, and Marley. If I had to pick a main character, I'd probably say it's Bobby just because he goes by Count Zero, which is obviously the name of the book. But no no three of these stories here really felt like they were the main story and the other ones were kind of side stories. So yeah, I mean, I don't want to give anything away about the plot of the book. Maybe I'll just read the back here. Let's see if this... Uh, I might edit this part out. I don't know. Uh, see how good they, they described what this book is about. When the Moss Biolabs and Hosaka Zaibatsu's fight it out for world domination, computer cowboys like Turner and Count Zero are just foot soldiers in the great game. Useful, but ultimately expendable. When Turner wakes up in Mexico, in a new body, with a beautiful woman beside him, his corporate masters let him recuperate for a while, then reactivate his memory for a mission even more dangerous than the one that nearly killed him. The head designer from Moss Biolabs says he wants to defect to Hosaka, and it's Turner's job to deliver him safely. Count Zero is a Rust Belt data hustler totally unprepared for what comes his way when the designer's defection triggers a war in cyberspace. With voodoo gods in the net and angels in the software, he can only hope that the megacorps and the super rich have their virtual hands too full to notice the amateur hacker with the black market kit trying desperately to stay alive. I'd say that's pretty good, uh, pretty good little summary of what this is about. Now, if you've not read any of the sprawl, obviously you got to start with short stories, then you got to start with Neuromancer. But this being the second book in the trilogy, it's not like a traditional trilogy where you're following one story for three books, the same cast of characters. This one, completely new characters, new stories seven years removed from Neuromancer, and I thought that pretty much everything in this book worked for me. Uh, I, I really did love all three storylines, all three main characters. Uh, all three stories brought different feels to the book. Turner's story, you're getting a lot of action. You're getting some military. You're getting corporate espionage. You're getting like a Metal Gear Solid type of mission that he's about to embark on. And Bobby's storyline, you're getting a lot of that underworld, that gritty, crime-ridden underworld in New Jersey. He's an aspiring hacker. He wants to make a name for himself. He wants the name Count Zero to basically become immortalized. And then you got Marley, who runs an art gallery in Paris, and she's hired to basically do this, uh, to figure out this mystery on who's making this, this device, this box. At the beginning of the book, all three stories definitely feel very unique and removed from each other. But uh, the deeper you get into the book, you realize they're kind of intertwined and they're all interconnected in a way. And then they do connect near the end where you kind of see the overall grand vision of how, th how these three stories kind of come into each other. But I have to say, uh, I, he Gibson deserves all the respect in the world for following up Neuromancer with Count Zero, the impact that Neuromancer had on the sci-fi community when it dropped and he won those all those awards, the only book ever to win those three awards that I mentioned in the review, you would think that somebody that would do that would just kind of maybe play it a little safe on their, ne on their next book, but Gibson doubled down uh, after the success of Neuromancer, went right back into the same world, the same sprawl, and wrote another book that I think is just as good as Neuromancer, honestly. There's like little tiny negatives and positives 
for both books that would flip them in my mind, but this is as good as you can get to Neuromancer. One of the one of the highlights I think of this book really to me was already reading the short stories and reading Neuromancer. By the time you get to Count Zero, you have so much world building built up into you. You understand the technology. You understand the stakes that are that the 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 stakes that they're playing for here. You understand all uh, the big corporations, these mega corporations, the locations, just the overall uh, the brand names, stuff like that. You you are already familiar with almost all of it by the time you get to Count Zero, so you're not really lost. Like if you just started to read Neuromancer. You would it would take a it would take a while for everything to absorb into you. You'd probably have to make an Excel spreadsheet to try to keep what's a name, you know, what's a name, what's a corporation, what's a location, uh, what do these terms mean? But when you get to Count Zero, you're already so invested into the world that it all of that stuff that seemed excessive in Neuromancer, the world building fits perfectly in here so you don't have to kind of pull that up in your memory like what was that was that a corporation was that a was that a person uh was that a was that a piece of technology what was that so that aspect of count zero i really loved it kind of just made the book flow a lot easier the switch up gibson does for his prose i mean i would say the pros in this is almost on the level of Neuromancer. It's not quite there for me. I still think Neuromancer has the superior prose, but I kind of chalk that up to the narrative structure that he that he switched up for this. You know, three different POV characters in this as opposed to just the one POV character in Neuromancer. So that does switch up his prose, but he kind of subtly switches the prose up for each story. I, I don't know if that was just a conscious thing or if that's just kind of how it played out, but I thoroughly enjoyed uh, my time with Count Zero. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would to read it. I kind of did these weird... This book made me have weird, like, binge, binges. Like, I would, I would read 60, 70 pages, and then I wouldn't read it for three or four days, and then I'd read 60 pages. So that's why it took me a little longer to get through it. I mean, it's only about 300 pages, so... It exceeded my expectations. I knew it was going to be... I knew it was going to be a contender for Book of the Year going in, just because I had never read past Neuromancer, and I and doing it this way, I think it just is the best way to go about it. If you're going to read The Sprawl, if you're like me at least, I have to absor I have to be full in to the world. I have to read them back to back to back. Uh, if you took long breaks in between Neuromancer and Count Zero, you might be a little lost. Uh, you don't have that stuff readily available to pull up in your memory. I just <clears throat> loved all of the weird shit that Gibson did in this book. It just all worked, and it all fit inside the world. The whole thing about the Moss Biolabs, like the big bad corporation in this, they have produced this new biochip, and it's basically just like insane technology. And just like the the stuff that he that he pulls, like I don't know where he's pulling this stuff from. Like there's, uh, like this said on the back, voodoo gods in the net and angels in the software. He's able to pump in like like straight up voodoo gods that are like fragmented parts of the of the AI, almost like ghosts in the machine. It just, it I don't know what it was, but it just it just worked. Like it just it felt. It, in the weirdest way possible, it felt super realistic. Like these people building up this mythos around this fragmented AI, which they believe are these voodoo gods. It just, I don't know, man. I don't know what Gibson was on when he wrote the Sprawl trilogy, but I think I need a dose of it. I highly recommend if you've read Neuromancer, you got to read Count Zero because I know a lot of people, I mean, it's, I'd probably say 90, 95 plus percent of people that have read Neuromancer never continued with the trilogy at least if they have i've never seen anyone talk about them and they're doing themselves a disservice by not getting more great content out of this out of this world and i i did start book three mona lisa overdrive uh i'm about 82 pages in or 80 something pages in and it's 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 uh if if gibson can keep this going for the for the last you know 200 200 or so pages 
This one will probably be my favorite in the series. If I had to say for Count Zero, uh, if I had to give it a star rating, it's hard not to give it a five star, maybe four and a half, but I think in the end it's, it's a five star book. Not quite surpassing Neuromancer for me right now. When I was, when I was about 80 pages into this, kind of like where I'm at right now in Mona Lisa, uh, when I was about 80 pages into Count Zero, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm digging this a lot more than Neuromancer. Like I'm, I'm into this a lot more. And I think mainly that just had to do with the fact that I had just come off the three short stories and Neuromancer. So the world building was all kind of already in place. And well, I did love this, this whole ride. I do think I preferred Neuromancer just a, just a tad more than Count Zero. This is definitely uh, a hidden gem, at least in sci-fi. And I think more people need to read this and more people need to talk about it because uh, it was a damn masterpiece. Just uh, Gibson continuing to expand on his visionary, his visionary mind like he did in Neuromancer, coining the term cyberspace and, you know, jacking into the Matrix, all that stuff. I mean, Count Zero came out in 1986, and there's a whole passage in here that I, I posted on my Instagram about how Gibson, to a T, predicted and just nailed uh, camera filters, you know, the beauty filters, removing of blemishes, stuff like that. Like, he was so forward-thinking in the 80s. Uh, it, 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 just, it just blows my mind uh, that, that he's able to still... And, and the, that whole thing, the whole prediction, that whole passage about like the the camera filters was it's not even like a main part of the book at all it had nothing to really do with the plot it was kind of like a throwaway paragraph and i'm like man he just he just did like a random throwaway paragraph to kind of add to the world building and he completely predicted something that is actually true in 2022 uh, that's used on a daily basis by thousands of people it just it just is a testament to gibson's incredible mind and his his true visionary uh his true visionary artistic expression that is relevant today and count zero was an awesome book uh awesome ride really glad that i did this sprawl september i will keep talking about these sprawl books uh i'm probably gonna do a why you should read on the sprawl when i'm done with the trilogy but yeah count zero highly recommend it and that's pretty much all i got uh, I will be doing another review for The Sprawl, finishing up with Mona Lisa Overdrive once I'm done reading it. Kind of timed it to where I'm going to be finishing Mona Lisa right at the end of the month. So, pretty successful Sprawl September for me. We will see how I feel about Mona Lisa Overdrive when I finish it. Unless it completely shits the bed, it's definitely on pace to be my favorite in the series. So, keep an eye out for that video and subscribe if you have not. Give me a like. And I'll see you next time.